Welcome to this video from the Australian College looking at how to install an SME server. Now we're going to install it on VirtualBox. There are a couple of assumptions made. Assumption number one is that you have either the CD with the ISO or you have the ISO stored locally. Um, VirtualBox is a very useful program for installing multiple operating systems and to start off with we're going to choose new and we're going to give it a name now what I'd like you to do is I'm going to use my name and SME and server so I can identify it the type will be Linux operating system and the version will be 2.6 next I'm going to give it around about Two gig worth of virtual RAM to play with. I'm going to create the virtual hard drive. And while the default is 8 gig, I'm actually going to give it 20 gig to have a decent size to play with. And I'm going to create it. Now this is the initial parameters set up to allow your virtual machine to connect to network we're going to have to play around with the network settings the way to do that is come over to settings clicking on settings going down to network now we're going to choose a couple of different settings we're going to choose an internal network for adapter number one okay and it should be the Intel Promiscuous mode, I'm going to allow all. Um, it works usually with all settings, but I'm, I found that I have least problems when allowing all in promiscuous mode. And the name Brett Internal. Well, it's very easy to identify. I'm then going to set up adapter number two. Now, adapter number two is going to have NAT. Okay. And under the advanced settings I'm just going to leave them as the default so just going through again number one internal network relevant name adapter type and promiscuous mode adapter number two NAT has been set up and all the rest are the default settings uh, the reality is that you don't need to um, play around with anything else but you can come in here and change any of these now the boot order if you are going to um, do any um, booting off the network and you'd like to include that, then yes, you can include the network here. Um, I will be doing from either of these, CD or hard disk, so I'm just going to leave them as is and click on OK. As you can see, it's now updated the display to show the network adapters both 1 and 2. Let's go forward into actual install. Click on Start. When Start Appears, you'll have an auto info that tells you that um, your auto capture keyboard option is turned on and how to do so. And OK. Now, selecting a startup disk, if you have a CD drive, it'll detect it straight away. I'm going to choose an optical file from that I've saved earlier on my network, and here's my SME file. Clicking on open and click on start. Now, the process itself is actually fairly straightforward. You'll get your immediate launch screen. Okay, I'm going to install, so I'll, I'll just hit enter. It will run through and set out the, the various environments. Okay, because it doesn't support mouse integration, okay, um, it'll just tell you how to go about doing it. You need to do anything with the mouse. And as you can see, the various parts of the system are loading. Now the actual install itself actually doesn't take that long. To begin testing the CD media before installation, press OK. Simply use your tab key and skip this, so you don't need to do so. Simply use the tab key to pop between the two and choose skip. And rather than it running a test on your um, CD drive to make sure it works, um, it will continue with the install. As I said, I'm just doing this directly from a file located on my hard drive so there's no need for me to run the um, test. 
Language selection, once again using the tab key, English is fine. And model keyboard, once again using the tab key, yes. And it will then say it's going to partition the virtual drive. I'm happy to do that. And it's going to go through, it'll find the installation files. The time zone, you can choose the appropriate one for your area. Uh, I just have to scroll down till I find Australia. Went too far. And let's find Sydney. There it is. Tab, choose the OK. So as you can see, the tab will let you go in all three. And it will now start unpacking the installation package itself. Uh, it's fairly straightforward. Okay, once again, it'll give you the warning. Just tab across. It's like you know, it's going to reformat and the data will be. And it's also going to create a log file. Okay. Um, the process, as I said, is actually a fairly straightforward process for the installation. Um, it's a lot quicker uh, process than installing most uh, other serving operating systems, um, Windows in particular. Um, and one of the things I do like about the installation process is that it gives you a countdown as well, which is uh, actually fairly relevant. Um, as we go through doing this install, after the install is completed, we'll then run through setting up um, some of the features of an SME server. So as you can see, there's a, there's a total of 567 um, packages, um, and it'll literally just give you a countdown as it goes through um, the size of the, the file, um, how long, and as you can see, it pops along at a fairly brisk pace. SME server is a very um, viable server for a lot of small um, and medium businesses these days. Um, it's a very um, user-friendly server in many respects, uh, fairly straightforward and, and easy to manipulate. Uh, if you are used to working in a graphical user interface, it has a web interface that you can utilise to manipulate. Um, if you are hand, uh, capable of and handy enough to be able to work within the actual um, system um, tool itself, uh, it's mainly text based and um, just using your tab and arrow keys, it's uh, very easy to configure. As you can see, it's only been a minute or two and we're already at the halfway mark of the install. Now one of the good things with using VirtualBox is if for whatever reason the install doesn't work out, it's usually not too much of a, a problem to actually go back through and, and uh, redo the installation process. For example, if you forgot to set up the network um, prior to running the install and you notice that as you're halfway through, simply let the install run to completion, um, go through the, the various steps, and then delete the file, go back and do it again. I know this may be slightly frustrating, but it, as you can see, we're already two thirds, oh, sorry, three quarters of the way through the installation, and there's only been a few minutes. So, four fifths of the way through, and it's only got 62 little packages remaining. Um, and as you can see, um, a very quick um, and succinct installation. Now, after this actual installation is run through, um, there's a very small configuration phase. When that happens, uh, I'll, I'll take you through it as well, but it's um, a very easy um, to install server. Um, the beauty of a SME server is that 
it allows you to be to use it in a number of different roles. So as you can see, we've now finished the initial part. It's doing the um, update of the log file um, that it said it would do at the beginning, and it says congratulations, complete. Remove any media and press enter to reboot. So we're now going to reboot and as you can see it's sending the termination signals through to all of the various parts of the machine. Okay, a nice little message from VirtualBox there. But it's done the reboot and we're, we're back to our install. Now you don't have to touch any key by the way. Um, it'll actually, I'll just click on close that off, it'll actually just reboot itself normally. Go back through and it will initialize itself. Once that's done, we'll then move to the, the next part of the install, which is basically setting up um, the admin user environment. And I'll take that through a little bit slower, um, just so that we're very clear on what needs to be done to be able to set the, the machine up um, in a virtual environment. So in particular, you can talk on the network. If you happen to get a fail on any of these green OKs, by the way, it means for whatever reason um, the ma machine hasn't done the install properly, simple process, continue going through as much as possible, but then delete and redo. Do I wish to restore from backup? This is the, this is the default one. The answer is going to be no. Once again, I can simply by using my left or right arrow keys juggle between, but it's going to be no. Welcome to the server console. Okay. We need to make a, a series of basic network configurations. Okay, now you must set up an administrator password. For the purpose of this exercise, uh, can I ask you to simply type in in lowercase, because it is case sensitive, your full name, first and surname. Uh, the reason being, uh, it's an easy password to remember. Now you are going to be prompted during this uh, this install that it is not secure enough and I'll agree with that 100%. However, it's simply for the purpose of this exercise. Um, in reality you would use a combination of upper, lowercase and special characters, um, but you'd always start with lowercase. Hit next. It says the password you have chosen is not a good choice because it does not contain special characters. Do you wish to to choose a better one, I'm going to say no, and it'll ask me, prompt me to type the password again. So as I said, for your password, please choose your first and surname together, but all in lowercase. All right. Now please enter the primary domain name for your server. Okay, and as you can see, it pops up as my company. I'm simply going to type in Brett. Once again, this will be in lowercase only, and I'll leave it as dot .local, okay? So, this will be the default domain for your email and web server. Next, please enter the system name for the server. So, once again, in lowercase, this is going to be Brett SME, okay? And I'm just going to leave it at that because it's very easy. You can type in server if you like and use your backspace, but just Brett SME, why? It's very easy to remember. So once again, you'd use your first name and SME. Click in next. Now, select the proper device for your local network. Okay. As you can see, it's actually going to use adapter number one that we that we have chosen earlier on. And look, I'm quite happy for that choice. Okay. Uh, it's going to enter a default IP address. As you can see, it's a protected class C IP address, the 192.168, okay, and I'm going to leave the, the default settings. Obviously, if you're going to set this up in a real network, you'd have a chat and work out the actual network configuration you're going to use, okay, and it's got its default subnet mask, okay. Now, I'm going to set this up as a server and gateway. Um, the reason I'm going to set this up as a server and gateway, I'm actually going to uh, allow in internet connections to happen. Okay, so next, and it's going to be a dedicated, in other words, uh, I'm going to be using an internal network card and an ex connecting to an external loader. Okay, 
and as you can see you need to select the proper device for your external network okay and remember we set this device number two up with that earlier on and that's why we're going to choose device number two okay now DHCP dynamic host configuration protocol okay um, as you can see for cable modem users select DHCP okay this one we're going to use DHCP send Ethernet address as a client identifier which is basically saying hey listen we're going to use the local machine okay we don't need to use a dynamic DNS service domain name service the reason being um, in this instance the domain we're actually setting up as a virtual machine with this one domain we're actually not popping it onto the internet okay next provide DHCP to your local network yes we can allow that on a thing our local network in other words, this machine can work internally and provide DHCP services okay and once again I'm simply going to choose the default ranges that are provided here as you can see once again they're a class C IP address okay and they specified a range for me now if your server does not have access to it or you have special requirements for DNS enter the DNS server once again don't need to enter the DNS server here simply choose the default okay and do I wish to activate my changes if I say no here I can actually go back through all of the screens using the no and the back buttons and make ch needed changes but look these are the changes that I'd like to have and yes what's going to happen is that they're going to configure those settings on the machine which will allow my machine to connect to the internet okay uh, via my local network so if I'm at work or at home and I have an internet connection my ad card, adapter card number two will actually pick up that internet connection and I can download and connect and surf the net if I'd like to okay my internal card will work on the internal addresses only now this normally only takes a minute or two to actually configure the actual settings once that's once that is happening um, or has happened it'll shut down and restart and you will need to log into the server Now, the default login is going to be admin, okay, and the password once again will be your first name and your surname together in lowercase. Now, please note the password doesn't go across the screen as in the Windows environment, it simply um, will enter one on top of the other. Hit enter, and congratulations, you're into your server console. As you can see, and we'll be doing this in a number of later videos, uh, you have a number of different options. I hope you've enjoyed this short video on working in SME Server. I hope you find it very useful. Thank you for your attention.